Becky, or Dave, Steve, y'all are, are wonderful. Thank you for hitting that uh, Memorial Day theme right where we need to be hit. Thank you for that distinction of servicemen and women who have died during active service. Praise the Lord for them. How are y'all doing this morning? Blessed, how are you? Doing great to you, thank you. I did want to recognize uh, Dean and Valerie Brown. Y'all wave at us from the back. Uh, long, long term members of the church who moved away and have come back for a visit today. I know Dan has his mother from Michigan with us. Y'all wave at us back there a little bit, please. Any other special guests with us today that we could recognize? Anybody? are all special guests, aren't you? Hey, we're just lucky to be alive today, aren't we? Uh, I was just praying last night. Uh, first of all, selfishly, Lord, don't let my power go out. Did anybody else feel that? Because, uh, you know, I was preaching today. I mean, come on, God. I mean, I'd like some rest. So I was trying to bargain with him a little bit, and the thunder would clap, and my fan that I had next to my head, it would go, mm. and I'd just be praying, and since I prayed so hard, it would go, it didn't start blowing real hard again, but uh, I was like, Lord, this is a Saturday night. Why would you put a storm on us on Saturday night? But he did, didn't he? And uh, I know a lot of folks are home today uh, because of that storm, and many are home for other reasons, too. But Kenny is out today, as you all can see. I'm not Pastor Kenny. Uh, he has gone somewhere with his wife. I'm not supposed to tell you all where. It's a secret. Uh, I'm just kidding. He's a rich rest. We're, we're, I'm overjoyed uh, to fill in for him today, and I'd like to ask you to turn to Joshua 13. How did you like that statement, I, I'm not a hero, but I served in the company of heroes? Uh, I feel like uh, we can look around us in our lives and pick out some heroes that we have gotten to serve next to. I look at, I've, I've, Dave hires as one of my heroes. I, I, so Omar and Betty and, and many others that have reached an age where some might say, hey, it's time to kick back and, and, and let somebody else do all the work. Aren't you glad that they don't have that spirit? And I look around at many of our senior adults and I, I, I sometimes wonder if, if folks realize what the role is that you play as a senior adult and how critically important you are to the rest of us. Amen. Uh, and, and, the, and the encouragement and the, and the modeling that you do of who God is and what it's like to get to get older. Um, God would say to each of us, um, man, old age is just an ex is a time for you to, to work for me, maybe just in a different way. Uh, we never quit in God's call, do we? We never quit. What is that call? I mean, it is to lift up the name of Jesus, right? Wherever we are. And there is no age limit on that. In fact, you may be doing that much better as you get older than you did when you were younger. So you're never retired from the service of the Lord. And there is no limit to what you can do. Now, some of the greatest encouraging moments I've ever had in my life is when I went to visit someone in the hospital. And they were laying there encouraging me. Amen? If you're ever down and disheartened and wondering about is life worth living, go start serving people that are hurting and God will remind you that encouragement goes both ways. You might be the one doing the encouraging, you might be the one getting the encouragement, but just serve Him and lift up His name and there's no age limit to that. And with all your aches and pains, amen, <laughs> you, you're going, your, your mind can become all about yourself and how bad you're hurting and how bad your problems are. I'm not making light of that. I have my own share of, believe me. But God wants our mind on the mission and He will use our problems and our age and all those things to work out for good things that don't feel very good. Sometimes old age doesn't feel very good. You know what I'm saying? It hurts. But God, God, God is not limited by our problems. In fact, I was reading Joseph's story the other day. Do you remember what he said to his brothers? What you meant for evil, God meant for what? Good. 
So all the bad problems that problem in Manchester this week, all the horrible death of children by bombing, can God in heaven work good in a situation like that, yes or no? What man means for evil, God means for good. All these things that might, we might think are negatives, getting older, I, I'm guilty. I've thought for many years, I just don't want to get older, period. I want to be able to run with the young bucks. I want to be able to work with the young bucks. You know, like a, like a work day like we had yesterday. A man for about 10 minutes, I can hang with him. Really, really well. And then you, then you start strategizing, okay, now, is it two Tylenols or was that ibuprofen? That I, you know, so you start strategizing how to deal with old age. I want to introduce you to Caleb this morning. He's an old guy, um, and I, I just, I'm, 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 I don't want to preach to you this morning. I want to share with you what God teaches me through Joshua chapter 13. What does God expect from us uh, when we get older? What's the call? First of all, do we are we supposed to get old and cranky? No. And our spirit is supposed to get negative and mean because we're in survival mode, right? That's what God intends, correct? No. no. Yeah, but you feel that way. How many of y'all feel a little cranky some, some days? Jan, I see that nodding head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I battle that personally, my, my spirit. And as I get older, I want to make sure that I'm lined up biblically with what my spirit is supposed to be as I age. And there's a lot of, you know, I, I could be just a, I could just be a mess with all my problems. And when you talk to me, instead of me encouraging you and sharing Jesus with you and glorifying God with you, I could just be negative and nasty and, and we lose this opportunity to glorify the Lord. I, I, I want to be careful with that. I want to introduce you to Caleb. The Bible says in Joshua 13, and I'm reading out of New King James, Joshua was old. I didn't say that, the Bible said. Okay? Advanced in years. And the Lord said to him, You are old. <laughs> Advanced in years. Uh, that's funny. Uh, my kids think I'm old. Some of y'all think I'm young. I mean, what, what is old anyway? But here, God says he's old, so he's old. That just settles that, right? There remains very much land yet to be possessed. Now think about that for a minute. What is God's expectation there for Caleb? You're old, and yet there's a lot of land to be conquered. What is God saying? Now, your age, Caleb, is not an excuse for you not to conquer the land. Guys, am I reading that wrong? There is no time in our lives where we stop being about God's Agenda. Now in those days, how did they conquer the land? They conquered the land with a sword. Is that what we're conquering with today? No. What do we conquer with? Somebody throw me out an answer. The sword of the Spirit. The Word. What was the, was the cross a symbol of conquering? Yes. Is, is, is love? Does love conquer? Yes. yes. So all, we just we, we don't fight with a sword anymore, but we are supposed to conquer with the things that Jesus conquered with. Remember, take up your, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. What did Jesus conquer with? He conquered with, I am here to serve you, to love you, to show you my Heavenly Father. And that becomes the mission of the believer, and that's what we conquer with. We conquer with Light and love and holiness and purity. When you say no to temptation. When you speak a word about who Jesus is. When you respond with kindness to those who are your enemies. Are these all ways of conquering the land? Yes or no? Yes. yes, they are. And I love the fact that old age doesn't remove us from the responsibility to be conquerors. I want that to sink in. First and foremost, I want it to sink in here. And I want it to sink in you. You have the same call that God gave Caleb. God, Caleb looked at God, God, God looked at, at, at excuse me, Joshua. We're going to get to Caleb in a minute and said, Man, you're old. And yet there's still land to conquer. 
until you draw that last breath, you are a conqueror for Jesus. And I'm not just saying that to be stupid. Amen? Because, I, I, was it Zechariah 4, 6? Can anybody quote that verse for me? My favorite verse in the Bible. Gary Tina, you've got it, don't you? Not by might. Not by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. Until your last breath, what do you have on this earth? The spirit of God. And you become a conqueror in every area, not by your own strength. By the Spirit of God. Amen. They might excited about that. So the mightiest warriors that we have in this church could be the oldest, feeblest person that can still pray. Still speak to the God of the universe. Guys, that is a treasure we hold in our hands. Don't think for a minute, gosh, I'm just weak and old and tired and I can't do anything. Could that be an excuse? Y'all didn't laugh or anything. Supposed to, you know, could it be an excuse? Oh, I, you know, I, I put in my time. <laughs> I, I, I kind of wonder sometimes. I say, well, all right, Lord, when, when's my time? <laughs> when have I put in enough? According to this passage, when have you put in enough time? Are y'all excited about that? Or are you going, oh, gosh, that's not good news? <laughs> I don't know. Not my power, not my mind, but by my spirit. We're always called to be a conqueror of the darkness by the light of Jesus that's in you. And you can do that without saying a word. You can do that by praying. You can do that by showing kindness. You can do that by having the right spirit. How many of y'all have struggled with a bad spirit this week? How many of y'all are married? <laughs> How many of y'all have kids? Can you get into trouble with your spirit? Yeah. What about driving to church? Man, I mean, it can happen, can it? Just like that. So I want to get old. I want to, I want to remember my mission when I'm old. My mission isn't fishing. <laughs> as much as I wish it was. Uh, what did I see yesterday hanging up around the restaurant? Paige, you might have to help me. My greatest fear when I die. Ellie, were you there for that? So if I get it wrong, you're going to help me, right? My greatest fear when I die is that my wife will sell my fishing tackle for what I said I paid for it. <laughs> so as we get old, the Spirit of God in us, giving us an excellent spirit, and that's what we're talking about this morning, a contrast of this, oh my goodness, let's move forward for God with a whole heart, no matter what age we are. And this other kind of weak spirit that just kind of dies along the way, that's what we're contrasting this morning. Joshua was old, advanced in years, and the Lord said, You are old, and there remains much land. This is the land that remains. And he gives him a whole bunch of different names, all the way down to uh, the end of verse 6. Well, verse 6, all the inhabitants of the mountains from Lebanon as far as the brook fish Rephoth and all the Sidonians, and them I will drive out from the land. There's a little bit of a question that pops into my mind here. I thought Joshua was supposed to drive them out. Who's doing the driving out? God is. So you're called to the task, but who's bringing the big guns? God is. Don't ever think that he's called you to do a job that he is not going to do through you. Amen? So there is no job that we get to say no to out of fear that we're not going to have the ability to do it. Anybody excited about that? God just doesn't give us an out for the work he's called us to do. He says, listen. There's a lot of work to do, a lot of land to be possessed, and yet in verse 6 he says, I will drive them out before the children of Israel. Joshua, here's your job. Only divide it by lot to Israel as an inheritance as I have commanded you. Therefore, divide this land as an inheritance to the nine tribes and half the tribe of Manasseh. Who's got the hard job here? God. He's doing the driving out. 
Joshua is to do the dividing. Now, God has chosen, hasn't he, this partnership with you to do his work. He will provide the power, but you have a role. He will provide the power, but you have a role. So as we get older, uh, we bring all kinds of unique things to the table. But it doesn't excuse us from being conquerors of the land. And I want to ask you today to renew your commitment that you are a conqueror through love, through light, through holiness, through patience, through gentleness, through the Spirit of God, and through the Word of God, you are a conqueror of the land to push out the what? The darkness. How many of y'all have got darkness around you where you work? All there, a man who walk into the local gas station, <laughs> and you'll see people that need the light of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And and He provides the conquering. That's not on you. But you provide the lips. You provide the service, and he, He'll He'll do it. And I just love this, Joshua. You're old. <laughs> But I've got a lot of land left to conquer. So what do we say in response to that? Break, break it on, Lord. I know I'm old. You don't have to tell me. i got more to leave in my house than I've got money. You know what I mean? But God, renew and revive in me the call to be a conqueror until my last breath. Conquering the darkness with the power of Jesus. Hey, how many of y'all got darkness in you that needs conquering? All right, I love that. All right, Joshua 13. Do I even need that? I'm getting crazy about that. What, what am I doing here? Is this thing working? I want you to, to find 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 real quick, if you would, please. Some of y'all are in difficulties beyond any other thing you've ever been going through gone through in your life. And I found this verse this week. I hope it, I hope it is germane to this today. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. So that no one would be unsettled by trials. You know, one of the things that when I was in high school, I wanted to be done with high school. When I was in college, I wanted to be done with college. When I was single, I wanted to be done with singleness. I'm going to stop there. <laughs> but if you're not careful, it's always the next thing. Y'all know what I'm saying? And in the midst of all that, we have we have troubles and trials, and, and there's no spot in life where we get to where those trials don't exist. They're always there, and they can unsettle us. They, the Bible says they can make us faint-hearted. Now, Joshua and Caleb were examples of men who were not faint-hearted. The Bible called them whole-hearted. As we come into trials, they can make us faint-hearted. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody been dealing with faint-heartedness? I'm going to put both hands up. Because every day that goes by, you're going, oh my gosh. And you're, and you're, just, you're, you're just trying to go, you know, Lord, what is going on? I mean, just... just but here's what Paul said, so that no one would be unsettled by trials. For you know quite well that we were destined for them. The things that have happened in your life, in my life, you've got two choices. Either they're accidental or they're destined. Which would you prefer? Pick one. That we serve the God of the universe, so what happens to us is not accidental. The trials that you and I are enduring, the trial I'm going to have if I fall off of this thing right here. The trials we have, Paul says, you know quite well we were destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted. And it turned out that way. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to you to find out about your faith. So in trial, what do your friends and family worry about you with? They worry about your faith. Are they going to see God in all this? Are they going to see that God's hand is all over this? Paul says, I, I just couldn't stand it anymore. I had to sin to see if your faith survived the trial. That who destined it for? God destined you for the trial. And I want to see if your faith has survived. That's what Paul is saying. Y'all make those kind of calls to your friends? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> is your faith alive? In the 
midst of this horrible thing that you are going through. But you know what else happens in trial? Who shows up? As we get older and our health problems start, it's easy to doubt God. It's easy for our faith to fail. But guess who else shows up according to this verse? The tempter shows up. The Bible says, I said to find out about your faith, I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you and our labors might have been in vain. So as we get older, the call doesn't change. God's call to conquer doesn't change. His equipping doesn't change. The problems change, don't they? They get unique to being older. And Paul would say, listen, don't think that you're going through that apart from something that God didn't do. He's allowed that. He's created that problem for a reason. That's what the word destiny is. He's got it ordained for your life. So we don't try to run from it. We don't cuss it. Anybody ever cuss when you got problems? Come on now. Thank you, Tia. I appreciate your honesty. We say to God, God, this is impossible. I don't know why you think I can handle this. this I don't like this at all. I'm under the most difficult thing I've ever been in. God would have us nod at him and say, God, okay, is, is 1 Thessalonians 3 true? Really? Is this destined for my life? The devil will show up and say, man, you really messed up somewhere. Or God really messed up somewhere. What's your problem? Why are you going through this? What did you do to cause this in your life? So guys, let me, let me bring this together. I'm not, I wasn't sure about, about sharing 1 Thessalonians 3.3, 3, but our, if our, the devil wants to take that spirit that we have, that, and he wants to make it mean and critical and grouchy and negative. When we look at all the trials around us, we say, woe is me. God wants you to see those things as part of His work in your life. <clears throat> so that when we get older, I accept the trials that I am destined for. I, I say to God, in everything, God, I thank you. Guys, this is going to matter in a moment because if you're not careful, your attitude can turn to sin. We're going to get into that in just a minute. How, what is your spirit like today? Is your spirit, as you've gotten older, is it like, God, yes, thank you, love you, life is difficult, but you're awesome, I want to continue in the fight, show me what it is, keep me going, until my last breath, or is it, and I'm going to show you a contrast here in just a minute. Here's the opposite of Joshua's spirit. I just showed you Joshua's spirit. Uh, well, I'm going to show it to you a bit better here in just a minute. Uh, Joshua 14, now. So guys, what are we talking about today? We're talking about getting older. We're talking about our spirit as we get older. We're talking about the trials that happen to us as we get older. Are they accidental? Have y'all been listening? No. Did the first us only speak to three just say that we were destined for that? Did it just say that? Did I make that up? Yes, these trials and things we're going through. Guys, if you're not careful, you're just panicking going... This is going on in my life and I'm about to lose control. I don't know what's happening. Nothing is happening to you outside of the hand of God. Nothing's happening to me outside of the hand of God. Two responses here. Joshua 14. Now, that didn't say that this was uh, easy this morning. Uh, I'm worried about this message always help, helping it make sense. Let's trust the Spirit of God to help it make sense. Amen? <laughs> okay. Now we have Caleb's coming into the picture. Joshua 14, 6. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal. Now here comes Caleb, the son of Jeph Jephunneh, the Kizanite, said to him, You know that the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. So what report did, did uh, uh, Caleb bring back about the land that they were supposed to conquer? Was it a good report or a bad report? Y'all remember? Now Caleb's report, it was good. Remember they were carrying those football-sized grapes? He's like, guys, check out the fruit, man. <laughs> this is amazing. And he was smiling when he came back. He said, man, this land is full of milk and honey and huge grapes. 
God can take this land. So he's, he's reminding them, hey, when I came back, I had a good heart. Verse 7. Nevertheless, my brothers who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. Now, were these godly people that went out with Caleb when Caleb went out? They were supposed to be. Now, what kind of spirit did they have in their hearts? <coughs> Caleb brought back. He said, man, I, I, I was excited about the grapes. I was telling y'all about God, how, how good of a great grower God is. I said that seven times. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the rest of them that came back, now, how is their spirit? Guys, when we leave here today, I, I want us to, have to know how's our spirit. Caleb says, when I came back, those that were with me, made the heart of the people melt. You know, one of the problems with being faint-hearted, you know one of the problems with it? Is it's contagious. Caleb brought back a whole heart full of excitement. The Bible says, uh, so Moses swore on that day, saying, surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever. Caleb says, God gave me a promise that this was going to be my land. Because you have wholly followed the Lord. As we get older, are we still called to wholly follow the course of the <laughs> Is it easy to get in excuse mode as we get older and to find reasons why we can't? Yes, it is. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses oh. while Israel wandered in the, in the wilderness. And now, here I am this day, how old? We got 85 year olds out there? Or older? Okay. As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war. This is the whole point of my message today. Wow. 85 year old. <coughs> Lead on. I'm right here with you. Let's go. I want my spirit to be that way. Anybody else? Every day He's given us is precious. Every day has to hurt. You might say, Chad, that's easy for you to say. You're not okay. Just wait till you get there. But I want to tell you something. I look around and I see some who blow that stereotype out of water that with old age comes loss. And I know there's some loss on some levels, but there's also gain on many levels. Amen? 85, I am as strong this day on the day. Do you think he meant physically? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> There's more than one kind of strength. Amen? Amen. Now, therefore, give me this mountain that the Lord spoke of, that you heard how strong the Anakim were. Anakim were the giants of the land, that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I will be able to drive them out. All right, I just love Joshua and Caleb's willingness to take on the call of God despite their old age. I'm inspired by that. Look with me at Numbers 14 real quick. What were some of the younger folks doing this whole time that the older folks were going, let's move forward? What were some of the younger folks doing? In Numbers 14, and I want to read this right here. This is important. That night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing this, us to this land? What's the Bible say then? Only to let us fall. This is a group of, this is kind of the opposite of what we're talking about today. This is the faint hearted people. Now, why were they faint hearted? Because the obstacles were big, weren't they? In fact, a passage that I'll skip because of our time frame that I was going to close with talking about the iron chariots of the enemy. That's what they were busy looking at, is how bad the problems were. Their minds were on the circumstances, and they were staring them in, in the face, and they were discouraged. How many of y'all would have been right there with them? I mean, let's go back to Egypt. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> That's why we're preaching this message today, is so we can make a choice. God, I do want to be one of the wholehearted, full-hearted people, not the faint-hearted. 
I don't I want to look at you. I don't want to look at the mess around me and get, get grabbed by discouragement and fear. Verse 6, Joshua and, uh, and Caleb, they tore their clothes. Why did they tear their clothes? Because of these faint-hearted people. They were like, Don't you, haven't you all seen God do His thing? What's the matter with your hearts? <laughs> you have to say that to some people sometimes that's, that's faint-hearted. Just be gentle with them, okay? Hey, listen, man, come on. God has. God did. God will. Come on, I'll go with you. Let's get in the Word. Let's read a little bit. Come on. And you carry these faint-hearted people because tomorrow, guess what? It might be you that's the faint-hearted one. <laughs> Amen? Are you all with me? So we've got a contrast between the wholehearted Joshua and Caleb's. We've got a whole slew of faint-hearted people. Which one are you? And I would ask, which one am I? And I would say to you, it just depends on the day. Amen? Some days I'm very faint-hearted. I don't, I don't want to be. But I'm going to have moments of failure. Amen? I'm just like you are. But as a whole... <coughs> Let's be wholehearted. And let's, let's, let's press on. So we got a contrast between, in Numbers 14, you know, what, what are these folks doing? And this is kind of my main point today. Why is the Lord bringing us to this only to let us fall? Who in the world were they blaming here? Guys, we're not careful with faint-heartedness and weakness. Guess where it's going to lead? This is important. It's important to me. <laughs> it's going to lead to sin. Because the Bible uses the word contempt. I want you to look with me at verse 23. You guys can jump ahead that far. Well, 22. This is God speaking now. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is so important. This is the teaching point today. Not one of these, God says, who saw my glory and the signs I performed in Egypt and disobeyed me and tested me, not one of them is going to see the land. Amen? Did they deserve to see the land? No. I don't know. Did you deserve to see the land? Thank God He gives us what we don't deserve. Amen. <laughs> Here's my point. God was not happy with the faint-hearted. Now, does God understand faint-heartedness? Yes. Does He understand we're made of dust? Yes. Yes, He does. But here's where we cross the line, and here's my point from my own heart. None of those folks are going to see the land I promised. No one had, who has treated me with contempt. When God has carried you out of Egypt, put you somewhere and things get a little hard and you start looking back and you say man he 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 failed me he has got me in a mess right now you know what the Bible calls that here's the word right here Contempt. the warning that I would give us as God's children today our, our spirit matters we're not careful Discouragement, the fear. If we don't treat it the right way, that faint-heartedness becomes something else. And that is sin. <clears throat> you look back at God and you say, God, you messed up here. Are you all with me? I know that's kind of a soul point. Please be careful and grab that. And I promise you, I will grab it too. God takes that very, very seriously. Danger of unbelief turning into contempt. So I, if you've got a if you've got a faint heart, first of all, don't hide that from us. We want to come around you and pray for you so your faint heartedness turns to faith. Amen. I, I, you know what I love about Beach Grove? It's it's not a fake place. <laughs> it's a pretty real group of people. But we need you to be real too. Share with us so we can come around. Make sure you don't slip from faint heartedness into something else. Uh, turn with me to Psalm 119. 
Now, am I asking you to change from faint-heartedness to full-heartedness on your own? No. Can't do it, can you? <laughs> Does anybody that know me well enough know what I'm fixing to give you here? What do we do when we're faint-hearted? Man, we need a trip to the woodshed, don't we? Something you young punks don't know anything about. <laughs> I never got to go to the woodshed when I was a kid because we didn't have a woodshed. All right? <laughs> to my mother, Kroger's was a woodshed. And she'd take off them size sevens. And I'd mouth off to her, can I have a volunteer? Great. <laughs> I don't care where we were, that shoe came off. My, da my dad never touched her. I wish he, I wish he had. <laughs> that would have been less embarrassing than my mother. She'd take that off, and I mean, she'd bend me over. Whack! What well, happened? Tissues were not designed for that. But anyway, that, that, that's what she did. But one time, she got me on the side of the road when my bus that I got kicked off of was flying by, and that she, she was wailing on me, leaned up against the back of the car. Y'all wonder why I'm scarred, man. I'm, I'm scarred. Now i got to remember what that had to do with this message. <laughs> um, God knows and loves the faint-hearted, and yet He's giving us the, the discipline, that's maybe where I was, of the Word of God. Now listen to what he says here. Psalm 119, 41. When, when you need answers to prayer and you need faith, what's, what do you do? Lord, help, help me. Now, is he going to rush right in and solve that problem exactly the way that you prescribe for him to solve it? In fact, be careful because he'll, he'll do it a different way just because you said... God, this is how you're going to answer my prayer. No, He won't. He'll, he'll, he'll find the prayer answered, but you're going to find it answered His way. Amen? Here's what, when you're faint-hearted, Psalm 119, let your mercy come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your word. So what did this person ask for? Two things. What were they? Mercy and salvation. Where am I going to find that? Word. So shall I have an answer for him who reproaches me. Now who is, who, is, who is this? This is an enemy. This is somebody that's coming against you. Does that make you faint hearted? Let me tell you the most difficult time I've ever had in ministry is when one old lady was mad at me. You say, Chad, that doesn't sound like much. Well, it was much. Let me tell you. Wasn't it this church or the previous church? I'd rather you beat me to a bloody pulp and be mad at me and be out talking about me to people. What do we do? So shall I have an answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust in your word. Every time I want you to see where God puts us back to. Take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in your ordinances or your word. Where's our hope coming from in that passage right there? Where's our hope coming from? The, the law or the word of God. So shall I keep your law continually forever and ever, and I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. Now here's what I love right here about faint-heartedness. What's verse? Y'all are y'all looking at verse 46 up here? Yeah. Okay. I will speak of your testimonies also before kings. You know, when I read that, I thought about faint-heartedness. How many of y'all want to stand up here and speak to everybody? Marita, thank you. Don't get that answer very often. Thank you, Marita. You're a good speaker, too. I enjoy hearing this. Uh, but this is before the king of the land. How many of y'all would be faint-hearted if you were called to present the cause of God in a godless society? We would be kind of scared to that. Where does this person's strength come? I will speak of your testimonies before kings, and I will not be ashamed. I will delight myself in your commandments, which I love. My hands will lift up to your commandments, and I will meditate on your statutes. When we are faint-hearted, God makes it very clear we have been given a gift, and that is what? The Word of God. 
I would challenge you that he is not going to encourage you apart from his word. Why should he? Now he'll start with his word. And he'll, he'll do it a hundred other ways too. But don't say, God, encourage me, fix my faint heart today. I'm going to skip your word. Don't have time for it. Is that what Psalms just, every single one of these, reproach of enemies, hopelessness, fear, all God brought them back to the word every time. It's time to close. One more song. Psalm 138. I don't think I gave that to you. I will praise thee with my whole heart. What are we talking about today? Kind of faint-heartedness? Wholeheartedness? Full-heartedness? The psalmist says, I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods while I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. In the day when I cried out, thou answered me and strengthenest me with strength in my soul. There are days and moments at the very center of your soul you are in despair and it's easy to get there and I, I read this song it started out with praise I will say with a whole heart what I what I what I learned from this y'all is that praise can be a way that God takes your heart from being what faint to being full. That's what the psalmist is teaching us here. I will praise you with a whole heart. And when I cried out to you, you strengthened me with strength in my soul. Does anybody need strength in your soul today? It's so easy to be downtrodden and faint hearted <laughs> trials and tribulations of your life right now. I love the fact that Joshua and Caleb could have found adequate reason to be faint-hearted. They had many around them that were exhibiting that trait. They, they walked in the strength of the Lord. And he used them as an encourager to all those around them. There was a whole slew. I, are there more faint-hearted folks than there are faith-hearted folks? <laughs> and which are you? And the question I got for Chad Rittenhouse is, which one are you? With my wife and I and my children and I, they need faint-hearted dad. I need to be in the Word so that my heart is full of faith and we can say, God, conquer the land. Let's go. Let's move forward. And in the strength of my soul, God moves us all forward as a family. That's His design. So if you have skipped the Word, and it's not an integral part of your life, I promise you that one of the symptoms of that type of approach is going to be faint-heartedness. Amen? It is His medicine and praise. Some days you just need to get alone, get in a room, and maybe just... Some days we need to get in a room and turn the radio off. Amen? And just get in the Word. Some days we need to get in the room and crank the radio up and start singing the praises of God Almighty and just speaking our belief in who He is. And guess what the devil does when we do that? Sayonara. He's out. See, and God just restores. You know, to me, that that's the great miracle that He does for me every day. He doesn't fix all my aches and pains. Fix all my problems. I ask him to. If he doesn't, just fix them all. But you know what he's never failed to do? I'm going to make this promise as a brother. He encourages a discouraged heart. He gives just what you need. Does he give me tomorrow's medicine today? You know why some of y'all are faint hearted? Because we're looking too far ahead. Amen? We just have today. He 
Enjoy it. Live it. Love it. Don't worry about tomorrow. Okay? I hope that bounces off the back wall and comes back and smacks me right here in the head. We just have today. And guess what Jesus said? I will be faithful today. I will give you what you got to have. Some of us are faint hearted because we're looking too far ahead. Amen? What are you going to be? Faint hearted or faith hearted? Faint hearted or full hearted? Don't separate the word out of your life because it's the medicine. 